You know, every time I take a guess, I, I run through my, 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 my iterations and, you know, I, I converge to a maximum point. I, sh I will show you what that is. But what I wanted to say, at least as far as this slide, is that if we look at the iteration costs, actually, which are really cheap in this particular case, all right, it takes me, you know, it, about a few hundred iterations or a few hundred or the equivalent of a few hundred model evaluations in order to get the to the map point in order to the get get to the maximum all right it took me only 80 or 60 or 40 to to build a surrogate okay so even in an example like this what you really want to do is build the surrogate first if you can and if it is cost effective and then run the optimization using the surrogate as opposed to every single time we run an entire weather calculation or an entire time and an ocean calculation, all right? So whatever we did on, on, on variational machineries or adjoint machineries, they really don't need to run on the model itself. If they can run on the surrogate, it's even better and it's really much faster, okay? And whether the surrogate comes from PC or whether it comes from an emulator, this is really a major advantage, all right? Okay, all right, so this is really the comparison between what happens between the case of a surrogate and, and a, uh, you know, uh, in, 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 in case of an adjoint and a full posterior. For alpha, where is, whether we're running the adjoint with, with the variational machinery or the full-blown full Bayesian machinery with Markov chain Monte Carlo, the posterior is nearly Gaussian, the Gaussian assumption is, is really all I can use my Hessian for, okay? And this is, we're, we're getting essentially the same thing. We're paying somewhat of a price, not in the map, but in the distribution, if I assume it to be Gaussian with, with the widths inherited from the Hessian, then I'm doing a nearly okay job on the widths, but not on the skewness of the distribution. And in the case of, of the M parameter, where it really doesn't matter, and I get the same thing, okay, whether I, I, I get it from the variational or, or, or from the full Markov chain Monte Carlo, the takeaway here is that the distribution is really flat, okay? If you're running variational machinery, you're always going to get a maximum, okay? If you stop at the adjoint, we're kind of friends, if you have information about Hessian, we're really good friends, okay? Because, you know, what information do you get in this maximum? Pretty much none at all, okay? The, yeah, there is a maximum here, and we're really not going to fight that much whether it's really here or there. But whether it's here or there or anywhere, it really doesn't matter, okay? And if we're running an, an, an adjoint machinery, you know, it's really not enough to say that I have a maximum here. You know, how confident are you in the maximum is something that, that the machinery needs to be able to tell us about, all right? And then I really like tables because at least I can put my numbers out and, you know, whether I run machinery in both ways, I can, you know, you know play games against myself and then, you know, see, see where the numbers are. And, you know, I'm, I'm just getting very, very close agreement whether I run it with Markov chain Monte Carlo and whether I run it with variational, both at, uh, as far as the map and as far as the nuisance parameter. And with a variational machinery, it's really possible to extend it to in, in order to get an idea of the nuisance parameters as well. All right? I still have a few more minutes. I want to give you another example which is much more difficult and here I do not claim that I, I have any answers or any any recommendation. Uh, this is, you know, there is a preprint that is out there but, you, you know, the, the, it's, it's really, the, the study is far from conclusive. For reasons that Mo will, 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 uh, will go through, I think, in his talk, we are looking at the evolution of a hurricane in this case, Hurricane Earl of 2010. There are, the reason I put the dates is that there are many Hurricane Earls. And this is the 2010 version. We have lots of, um, um, uh, this is where it was born. 
at that time. We have quite a bit of data for Earl, and we wanted to see whether the properties of this initial de de depression affected the evolution of the hurricane and whether we could learn or try to assimilate at least some, some properties of this initial de 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 depression. All right, so let me say a few words about the setting and about the model. The model is really quite complicated. It's actually the most complicated model that I've ever dealt with because it's a coupled, okay, ocean, which is right here, atmosphere and, 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 and wave model all talking to it together at the same time. And the reason we wanted to do this hopefully will become clear in the discussion or after most presentation. These are some of the parameters that are there. Even to run a week-long simulation with such, such a heavy beast, every run is 5,000 core hours. That's the easy part. The hard part is every run generates 10 terabytes of data. There is really no way of compromising this. And out of the 10 terabytes of data, we really need to pick a few quantities of interest. But they are configured in such a way that it really was not possible to hack our way into how the outputs are 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 managed and this is this is some some of the things that that we had to uh, uh, look at you would w notice also the insane resolutions which we had learned from the previous study this is obviously nested and the quite good resolution in in the in in the uh, in in the ocean model the wave model is running at the same resolution roughly the same resolution at, uh, as the ocean circulation model and what we're interested in is here what happens in, in the atmosphere, all right? So tell me, tell you a little bit about the setup is, okay, this is what we believe or what we, we think the, the initial depression looked like, all right? You cannot see much about these first two pictures because in these first two pictures, what I'm changing here is the maximum amplitude of the wind speed of the wind field. So I'm really not certain how fast this roughly the wind is spinning, okay? And you can see that it's really not a perfectly symmetric, but it has a first mode. In the second column, you also cannot see much because I'm changing the radius of the maximum winds, which is an important parameter for, 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 the, for the hurricane. But the third one, you see something, and what you see is that the, the blue here band here has rotated. So there is a rotation parameter that is part of our parameters that, that we're, we're changing. The last one, which has to do with the strength of the dipole, I, I'm, I'm not showing, but this essentially, we reduced our uncertainty to four parameters that characterize the, the initial de depression, and we want to sample and see what the impact of these uncertainties are and see if we can make a link into not essentially assimilating entire fields, but essentially assimilating some properties of this initial depression, all right? So we're sampling these uncertain parameters, and what I'm showing you here, at least let me see if I can, uh, is, is quantities of interest that are important to us and, you know, for, for, for weather prediction and, you know, hurricane risk. Maximum wind speed versus time, okay? Minimum sea level pressure versus time and hurricane track. Okay, and this is the entire 80 realizations of this four dimensional uncertain input that, that, that I have. The four, four being the strength, the rotation, the radius of maximum width and, and, and the, 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 the first moment, uh, property of that hurricane. The blue is the envelope. All right, and, and, and the white is, is actually really observation. And as far as wind, you can see that our envelope is really doing the right thing, even though all I'm controlling, I'm not assimilating anything. This is just initial conditions. And so for sea level pressure, we're essentially doing everything except that we're missing the, the, the very low values late, late, late in the game, essentially four days later. As far as storm tracks are concerned, because we started with an assimilated state, you know, we're, we're, we're all our, most of our calculations are falling right on top of the track, which is really quite reassuring. So we can try to see if we can do something based on these measurements, essentially to inform us as to what is going on, at least as far as the initial state is concerned. Okay. This is actually quite amazing, right? 
I can rotate the initial depression, I can change the radius of maximum winds, I can change the amplitude, and the track is really not changing that much. At least with these resolutions, which are really quite, uh, quite large. So here what I'm doing is essentially a, a, a generalized Fourier series of my quantities of interest. The way I build it is by building these so-called empirical orthogonal functions so that these coordinates that I'm building are, are over, it's really a technicality just to, to be able to, to represent data in, in a way that is actually quite oscillating. So I'm really not projecting on an entire time series, but I'm projecting on a, 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 an empirical orthogonal function, and these functions are, are, are uh, obtained by analysis of, of uh, covariance matrices. We'll, we'll get to that later on. Bottom line, I'm, I'm building an emulator. I'm here truncating after a certain number of modes, so for the, the blue curve, which is the minimum uh, uh, sea level pressure, because it's relatively smoother than the, than, than, than the um, maximum wind, uh, then with four or five modes, I can capture essentially nearly 100% of the energy of the process, whereas for the uh, maximum wind speed, with five modes, I'm on, only capturing about 80%, but this is some of the nuisance that we have to live with when a process is, act, when, when, when a quantity is, is, uh, oscillating very, very, very rapidly. If I see within this way of emulating or, or this way of representing whether I'm doing a decent job on, on reconstructing, and in fact that I am, okay, obviously the, 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 the agreement is really not perfect. These are the actual realizations. So da data here is what I actually observe, and the blue is how, how well I represent it, okay? So the representation is, is in fact quite quite decent, it's far from perfect, and there are very good reasons as to why. And if we, we look at the, at least from an envelope perspective, then we're really doing a, a, a reasonable job even several days uh, after, the, after the birth of the hurricane, in the sense that my, my prediction envelope is actually capturing what, what, what the observations are, are telling us, okay? So this is essentially where, where our prediction envelopes, this is my, if you want, my 99% confidence level. And no matter here where you pick, then you, you actually capture what the actual observations are, except maybe at the last day, the seventh day, then, then there are some departures. But even for the peaks, we're actually doing quite well. The, 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 the fine details of the recovery when, when the hurricane has started to die, we're, we're really not, not we're maybe our one point that we're, that we're missing on, okay? What we wanted to see is analyze a little bit on, on, on the likelihood of rapid intensification, and this is something that's quite important if one is trying to do warning about the, uh, uh, assess hurricane warning and, you know, um, try to set oneself up to see whether there are cause enough to evacuate or not, mitigate or not, what kind of precautions. And roughly rapid intensification, we look at the maximum winds at 24 hour interval, and if it has increased by an increment delta W or a threshold that delta W typically taken at as 15 meters a second, we say that there is actually rapid intensification. If not, then this is not a rapidly intensifying storm. And the way we're, 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 we're characterizing that is by looking at the conditional application of a conditional base. This is the probability of having a rapidly intensifying storm given initial conditions and, and, and a threshold parameter, which, you know, we've taken what's actually used and we varied it in a range going from 10 to 15 meters per second. And we wanted to see what are the parameters that, that affect rapid intensification the most in my, what properties of initial depression. And these are normalized probabilities. So on, on the X axis, I have the maximum winds. On the Y axis, I have the parameter that characterizes the rotation. 
And what we see here is that as the maximum wind increases and as the rotation increases in the sense that this blue curve is actually making a, 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 a penetration into the here, from here to here, all I'm changing is the threshold. So the threshold is 10 meters per second here and 15 meters per second there. What we see is that as we, uh, as we increase C1 and as we increase C4, there is a systematic uh, increase in, 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 in the likelihood of rapid intensification. If I look at projection, what happens with C3 and C4, you know, if I vary C3, there is really little variability in the three direction. So the radius of maximum winds is really not that important. And if I look in the C1 to C4, there is also little variability in, in, in the, um, uh, sorry, C1 to C3. There is really little variability in that first dipole moment of the hurricane. So our takeaways there is that uh, 